Welcome back to the channel everyone. I hope you are doing well in your neck of the woods. So this video, it's coming by request. You wouldn't believe I've received so many messages and questions about my Hightower and my Ripmo version 2 and asked me to do a comparison video. So I'm going to call this my impressions video and I'll make an attempt to compare and contrast these two. And again, these are my impressions. So I'm going to start by telling you though that I am not sponsored by Santa Cruz nor am I sponsored by Ibis and these bikes I own myself not because of a sponsorship. I believe this allows me to be honest about what I'm going to share with you all. Now if you like what you see on this channel don't forget to subscribe, like and hit that notifications bell. Alright let's get down to business. Okay so here are the numbers on the geometry of these bikes. You'll notice on the high tower it says HS and LS. That means high setting and low setting. You see the high tower has a flip chip on the rear shock linkage, which can change the geometry numbers and the characteristics of the bike. So, in the high setting, which for me, I felt keeps the high tower feeling most alive, is where I'll compare it to the Ritmo. You'll notice the numbers are quite close in many respects, and yet different, such as the head tube angle, seat tube angle, and the wheel bases. Okay, so I wanna make clear that my impressions on the high tower are going to be based on the build that I have here which is not the typical Santa Cruz build kit available. As you can see the lightest high tower build kit it comes in at just over 30 pounds and my build is right at 29 pounds without pedals. So here's how I did this. The frame is the CC carbon which is what I know is a half pound lighter than the C carbon frame. I ran an X01 drivetrain with 11 speed, not 12 speed. Now this is fine for me and I don't mind it on the climbs. And I was attempting to save weight so I went with 11, not 12. Next, I have XTR trail brakes. These are single piston caliper brakes. Most builds at this level, they come spec'd with code dual pistons, which weigh much more. On the fork, I went with a RockShox Pike at 150 millimeters of travel which is much lighter than a Fox 36 or a RockShox Lyric at 150 millimeters of travel. The crank set, it's a Race Face Next SL, which is their lightest carbon crank set that they make. The stem is also a Race Face, it's Turbine R stem, which is really light and strong. And bars, it's a Chromag BZA carbon bar. Oh, and one more lightweight thing, the dropper post. It's a RockShox Reverb Stealth at 125 millimeters, which will be changed soon because it doesn't go low enough. Rims are Industry 9 Enduro aluminum wheel set, and tires are Maxxis 2.5 Asagai XO, and that's in the front, and the WTB Trail Boss 2.4 in the rear. All coming in at 29 pounds without pedals. Again, this is not a typical build that you would see from Santa Cruz. It's kind of a, a hodgepodge of things that I put together the way I wanted it, coming out lighter than Santa Cruz's lightest build. You know, one of the things about the new Santa Cruz bikes with the lower link, they are so quiet. One of the reasons I believe is due to this chainstay protector, which is this ribbed thick rubber that deadens any chain slap in any situation on the bike. And they climb so much better. I remember on my VPP2 bike, it used to feel like it would get hung up on some of the climbs over rocks and it would just, what I mean is it would, it would dip into its travel. But this doesn't feel that way over technical rocky climbs and it doesn't get that feeling where it gets hung up over stuff causing you to lose any momentum. Okay, so I would describe this as the liveliness factor. One thing that I noticed immediately between having a high tower C model at a little above 33 pounds versus this high tower CC at 29 pounds is the liveliness factor. Shedding over four pounds makes a huge impact. The high tower feels very fast and nimble at 29 pounds. On flat and slower tamer trails, it doesn't feel as boring as I thought it would. I say that because my last high tower, it was four pounds heavier and the bike felt very balanced and good on mostly everything. However, 
it was sort of blah to me, and that it didn't feel poppy or nimble, or maybe the word is agile. But this Blue High Tower is very impressive. Right now, I could tell it's made a huge difference. And as far as how fast and nimble the bike feels, it actually feels lively, very lively. And I always kind of thought the high tower was a very good balanced bike, but didn't really jazz me all that much. It's just kind of there. And I thought it lost some of its playfulness that the High Tower LT had. This doesn't feel like that's the case with this change in weight. But I realize that's kind of an outlier. As far as Rocky Chunk, the VPP suspension is known for its plush feel, but on the new lower link, they do feel a bit more progressive which helps him climbing, but you may need to adjust for chunkier terrain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, buddy. And handles janky trail with ease that the rear end doesn't get thrown around and overwhelmed, maybe due to the frame being very stiff. But here is my build kit. Starting from the bars, we have Envy M7 bars attached to a race face turbine R stem. Underneath that is a Cane Creek 110 headset. Underneath that is a RockShox Lyric at 170 millimeters of travel, which changes the geometry head tube from 64.9 to about 64.5. Wheel set is again Industry 9 Enduro 305 wheels with Hydra hubs. And on the front tire, we have a Maxxis Asagai 2.5. Onto the rear shock, can you believe it? I saved some weight here, and not intentionally, it just so happened after I checked it out. I was considering the Fox X2, which weighs 515 grams. I checked into the Fox DPX2 at 496 grams, and then I decided to try out DVO. I've heard so much great things about them. So I went with a DVO Topaz, which weighs 393 grams. The cranks are Race Face Next R at 170 millimeters and an absolute black oval chainring. The drivetrain is a Shimano XTR 12 speed. The dropper post is a PNW Bachelor at 200 millimeters and a PMW Loam Lever controls it. Brakes front and rear are Shimano XTR dual piston brakes with 203 millimeters in front and 180 millimeter rotor in back. Rear tire is a Maxxis dissector in 2.4 version. As I mentioned earlier, I went with a larger fork at 170 millimeters. Now I specs this bike with a 160 millimeter fork. So when I go up to 170, it slackens the bike a little at the head tube and at the seat tube, but it does not climb in any way terrible. It is a DW8 bike, and I remember one guy said at Bike Magazine in the Bible of Bike Tests video, he said that he thought Ibis gets the best that Dave Beagle has to offer. Now this bike, it climbs so good. It just zips up steep climbs. To mitigate the slightly slacker seat tube, I just simply move my seat forward. When climbing, this thing just surges forward and it initiates tons of grip, making climbing actually fun and a breeze. Can a bike actually put a smile on your face while climbing? Well, this one does for me. The DVO Topaz adjusts with open, mid, and a closed setting. I keep it in the open setting usually, but if you go at the mid setting, this bike just becomes a rocket climbing for the top of the mountain. Now, the way I have this bike built up, it's actually a touch over 29 pounds. And I want to say this, it feels like it's lighter than that. It reacts to everything so playfully and lively. It just wants to go fast and reacts fast. It feels so poppy like a small BMX bike 
It's really hard to believe it's a large 29er the way it reacts. I'm not sure what kind of mojo I just put into this, but it's really fun. It loves to be in the air and it lands like it's on pillowy clouds. However, I want to make this clear, it's not a bike that needs to be pushed hard in order to get the fun factor to unfold. As I remember the original Ibis Rhythmo, it felt very linear in the rear suspension because it felt as if it got bounced around a little too much in the chunk. In descents, I wanted just a little more slacker head tube angle as well because I sort of had this wheelbarrow effect when I would stand up on the bike. To mitigate this, many owners of the original Ritmo just installed a Works Components headset, which slackens the head tube angle by 1 degree or 1.5 or 2 degrees. Now in the version 2 Ritmo, Ibis calls this the progressive geometry as they slacken the head tube angle while tuning the rear suspension differently. With the DBO Topaz in the rear, the DW Link reacts very progressive which gives the bike an outstanding small bump suspension which just glides over roots in small square rock. Progressive in the sense that it ramps up slowly as you need it. When in massive chunk, it absorbs everything without getting bounced around or feeling overwhelmed. The DW Link with the DVO is a perfect balance in any terrain. Pair it up with a RockShox Lyric and you're on your way for a very fun ride. I know that some have concerns when buying a bike that costs so much and the question is usually asked, what if something happens to it or if there's a defect? Well with Ibis, they offer a 7 year warranty on their bikes and their carbon rims. And I've heard that Ibis stands by their bikes and has a great warranty should anything arise, but I'm not sure how long their process takes to get that warranty uh, fulfilled and get you back out on the trail. With Santa Cruz, they offer a lifetime warranty on their frame and on their carbon wheels. Many shops have told me that Santa Cruz has the best warranty in the business and their turnaround time is fast, as in one to three days. I have personally experienced that with them and all in all, it took about literally four days and they set me up. I don't know if this is the truth, but I've heard from some shops that Santa Cruz strives for a 24 to 48 hour turnaround to get people back out on the trail. Some companies I've heard take weeks, if not up to months, to get the warranties processed. Now one thing with Santa Cruz is their carbon frames have a reputation for stiffness and not cracking. It's apparent that their newer lower link frames are built very stout and even the CC frame is heavier than their competition in its prospective category. Case in point, a Ritmo can be built up at 28 pounds easily if you want, but a high tower not so much. As you can see my build is pretty light, but as I said I skimped on a smaller dropper post and a 12 speed drivetrain and I even went with single piston brakes to try to get it as light as possible and it still never got to 28 pounds. One thing you'll notice on a Santa Cruz frame is the quality. Look at the paint. There is no orange peel and there is no waviness in the paint from the frame underneath either. It's like smooth glass, like a mirror finish. Look how straight it looks. It just screams quality. Even the paint next to the seat collar, it's perfect. They didn't miss any clear coat around the seat collar. When you purchase a Santa Cruz bike, you can tell it really is a premium product, right down to the linkage, the fit, and finish. And there's even a really nice mud flap over the rear linkage to keep out rocks and mud from the back tire, and it fits perfectly well. Now for the Ripmo juxtaposed to the high tower, immediately you can see a contrast. The main frame on the Ripmo has many wavy areas to it, which is not the paint, but the carbon frame. The down tube and top tube are both quite wavy. Now I run 3M clear protective vinyl on my bikes, and then I put shelter on the down tube, but this is not an effect of that. I'm not sure if Santa Cruz is able to quality control this better because they have their own carbon manufacturing plant that makes only their frames. But on the Ripmo, you can see the difference. 
One of the complaints I have, and I've heard BKXC and others discuss that the cable routing entrance is just too far back onto the frame, which allows the cables to touch your bars when you're turning and they still touch the frame when turning, giving you that cable rub on the paint and on your bars. If they were further forward, this may not be an issue. I thought that maybe they did this for an aesthetic purpose to keep them further back, but I'm not quite sure. Another thing I found to be an issue is the rear linkage is short of a shovel, sort of. It, what I'm trying to say is it collects various rocks and mud. You can see I put Venture Shield protective tape, then 3M clear vinyl over that. I've read on message boards of many complaining about this and coming up with various ways to mitigate your frame from damage. Now there's this little grippy piece of tape here that's kind of cut into a, a little bat looking type thing to try to mitigate some frame damage from the rocks but uh, a lot of guys are complaining that that has peeled off. This is something Ibis may need to rethink or come up with as an update to the Ripmo or in a newer version. Also this chainstay protector is not really that protective. As you remember in one of my videos when I unboxed it, I had purchased a specialized uh, chainstay rubber protector, but it didn't fit. I couldn't make it happen. Hopefully, Ibis will follow suit as Santa Cruz Pivot and Specialized and create a real meaty rubbery chainstay protector that deadens this chain slap and protects the frame. So the question needs to be answered, and many of you are probably asking this, which is better? Well, that's a tough question to answer. I went over some of the things that impressed me about both, positively and negatively. To add more mud to the water, there is the cascade link now for the high tower that will take the travel from 140 millimeters to, I believe, 150, which is so very similar to the Ripmo's ability on rear travel. I do feel the Ripmo to be a much faster, edgier bike in climbing and descending. It just brings a fun factor in all aspects of the ride. It feels like a, a poppy BMX bike. Now the high tower is so much fun too, but at this 29 pound weight. Now at 33 pounds, the bike felt very capable, very balanced and able to do anything, but it's not as exciting as it is at that 29 pound lower weight. However, I do feel at the end of the day, you can't go wrong with whichever bike you choose for your needs. If you like what you saw here, don't forget to like this video, hit the notifications bell, and subscribe as we continue to travel the narrow trail.